Colgate Tooth Powder presents The Theater of Romance. Tonight, Colgate Tooth Powder brings you Dane Clark and Faye Emerson in Love is News. Tonight and every Tuesday night, Colgate Tooth Powder brings you the theater of romance with your favorite stars and your favorite stories and plays. Use Colgate Tooth Powder, keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it at night. And now, tonight's presentation, Love is News, starring Dane Clark as Steve Layton and Faye Emerson as Tony Gateson. <laughs> Love has been called almost everything under the sun, depending upon the mood of the person who was doing the calling. But only rarely since Adam and met Eve has love been considered news, although it has occasionally made news. Well, we're going to tell you about one of those times tonight. Once there was a reporter named Steve Layton. This kind of a reporter, according to his boss. Steve, I want you to develop into the best young reporter in New York. And believe me, I'm proud of you. And this kind of a reporter. I'm telling you, Jane, Steve Layton's the smoothest thing in town. I wish he'd cast an eye my way. Well, that'll give you an idea about Steve Layton. Now, the girl that made love into news was an heiress. According to the newspapers, this kind of an heiress. Tell Walter Lamb to get out to the airport right away. Tony Gateson's coming in on the afternoon plane. I want a front-page story on her. And this kind of a girl. You seen Tony Gateson lately, Tom? Uh, Put her in a sweater and she'll stop traffic. I hear she's engaged to a count or something or other. Uh, How do you like the luck of some people? All that dough and Tony, too. And now we want you to meet Tony. Well, we're almost there. How soon will the plane be in, Tony? Mm, About ten minutes. I'd better get my things together. What are you tearing up? Letters, snapshots, anything I have that reminds me of my ex fiance the blue-blooded moron. I think you were a bit hasty about throwing him over, Tony. He's very charming. Charming? Darling, wait until you come into Aunt Thieves' millions, and every man you meet looks into your eyes and sees only your bank account. Wait until a lot of nosy reporters make a circus sideshow out of your private life. Just look at this paper. Tony Gates buys herself a count. Tin Can Countess says American men are boors. Exclusive interview by Steve Layton. You never said that, did you? I've never even seen the lying snoop. He got the interview from some maid that I fired. I never could understand why they call them gentlemen of the press. Uh, Miss Gateson? Yes? I'm Crandall of the airlines. There's a mob of reporters waiting outside, and I thought you might like a little help getting through, so I brought a special escort to see you to your car. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. If I may suggest, Miss Gateson, how about sending your friend out with the police? The reporters will think it's you, and then you can get away by yourself. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Will you do it, Lois? Sure, Tony. Uh, Pull the hat down over your eyes and turn your coat collar up, and that will do it. I'll meet you out at Uncle Frank's house, honey. Okay. See you later, Tony. Now, we'll just stay here in the plane until she has time to get through, and then we'll go. The reporters will be so busy chasing her, they won't even notice you, Miss Gates. Oh, that's very kind of you. And most thoughtful. Oh, not at all, not at all. Reporters cause us no end of trouble. They're always annoying our passengers, especially if they happen to be celebrities like yourself. You're not going to ask for my autograph, are you? <laughs> no, no, but I'll, I'll take a cigarette if you have one handy. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'll save this for my grandchildren as a souvenir of the beautiful Countess de Guillaume. Well, if that's what you're saving it for, have a light. Okay. I've uh, been reading about you and the Count in the papers. The Count? Let me tell you a few things about Counts. Wow. I don't blame you for calling off the wedding. The next man who puts a ring on this finger will have an American title like plumber, bricklayer, or motorman. Tony? Tony? What's the matter, Lois? You know who this man is. He's that Steve Layton, the reporter. 
And judging by the smirk on his face, he's tricked you into telling him plenty. Young, young lady, let me congratulate you on your excellent judgment of smirks. So, you're Steve Layton. Mm-hmm. It's getting a little chilly in here. Thank you, Miss Gason, for the cigarette and a most pleasant chat. You aren't going to print all that. I'll send you a copy. I wonder how you'd like to be hounded by a mob of peeping toms. How would you like being a public freak? Me, lady, if I had your money, they could put a press box at the keyhole of my front door. So long, Miss Gason. I'll see you around. Oh, what a dirty trick. Oh, I'll fix that Steve Layton. I'll make that interview the sorriest story of his life. Are those reporters still out there, Lois? They sure are. Well, call them in. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Is that you, Layton? Good evening, Mr. Canavan. Did you like the Gateson story? Did I like the Gateson story, he says. No, I didn't like the Gateson story. What do you mean by, by phoning in a phony story about Gateson and that cow? I never phoned anything phony. I got that straight from Miss Gates and herself. Oh, you did. And by what sadistic reasoning, by what stupid, short-sighted, imbecilic, diabolical thinking could you possibly let every paper in town scoop you on your own engagement? Now, look. Now, wait a minute. Let's be reasonable about... My what? Oh, maybe you'd like to read all about it in the Globe, or maybe the Times, or the Mirror, or the Herald, or even the Express. Give me that paper. Yeah. Stevekins, Layton, plans hundred million dollars. Tonykins, what in the name of? All right, read on, read on. Humble scribe to marry Tony Gateson, jokes contest with Gio. I'll sue. Yeah. This is criminal libel. That little cookie just trying to pull a fast one to get even me for getting that story out of her. Well, she's not going to get away with it. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm going to see a man about some arsenic. Oh. <laughs> I had an idea it might be you. I want you to get on your phone right this minute and tell my editor the truth. Well, come in and sit down, Stevie. You mustn't try to be so masterful yet, darling, after all the road of days. You are going to retract that story, and you're going to do it right now. Retract it? Not on your life. I'm going to build it up, keep you on the front page, show you how it feels to be a public freak. Oh, no, you won't. I'll have something to say about that. Well, you think they'll take your word against mine? I'm young, fairly good-looking, and I've got a hundred million dollars. What man in his right mind wouldn't marry me? I wouldn't. Nevertheless, we're engaged. Not for long. For just as long as it makes news. And when the scandal mongers get tired of reading about that, I'll give them another story. Eris gives reporter the air. I've put you in the headlines, and I'm going to keep you there. You know, you are the most disgusting thing that's come into my life since spinach. <laughs> you are a conniving. You're a lying little... Careful. Careful. Stevie, can watch your language. You ought to be burned at the stake. You know something, Stevie? I think you're falling in love with me. Love you? Why, I can hardly keep my fingers away from your neck. Sister, I'm warning you, I've stood about all I'm going to stand. Oh, you're so handsome when you lose your temper, Stevie. Uh, better pick up a morning paper on your way home. I told the reporters this evening I was settling a million dollars on you. Why, you... Good night, Stevie, darling. Good night. I'm going to see my lawyer about you right now. <laughs> Yes, he's gone. You know, it's a shame he's a reporter, Lois. He's really kind of nice. Careful, Tony. Yes. I see what you mean. I will be careful. Not that I ever could fall in love with a reporter anyhow. Could I? Could you? Have you? That's the $64 question, darling. I'll have to think about the answer. In just a moment, the Theater of Romance will bring you Act Two of Love is News. But first, young lady, remember this message from Colgate Tooth Powder. A telephone line is the shortest distance between dates. If your telephone is silent, maybe there's trouble on the line. But not the trouble you suspect. No, what keeps the boys from telephoning you for a date may be that little breath of trouble. I mean, unpleasing breath. But really, you don't have to let this breath of trouble rob you of romance. You can do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, night and morning and before every date. 
because scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate tooth powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. As for cleaning, no dentifrice at any price will clean your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate tooth powder. Remember the name Colgate tooth powder with the accent on powder. Colgate Tooth Powder brings you the second act of Love is News, starring Dane Clark as Steve Layton and Faye Emerson as Tony Gateson. X-ray, X-ray, Tony Gateson settles million on Panamish reporter. Uh, X-ray, X-ray. Who's there? Huh? All right, all right, wait a minute, I'm coming. I have an insurance what? policy here. They'll cover you for everything, Mr. Layton. Fire, what? accident, hurricane, floods, quince up, it's anything possible. Uh, take a look at these samples, Mr. Mr. Layton. We make the finest suits money can buy. Wait you a minute, can have you? a yacht, Mr. Layton. Only $200,000 uh, in 10 easy payments. No, no, wait a minute. No, I'm not interested. I'm not buying anything. Would you go away and let me sleep? It's the finest little car for the money that's ever been made, Mr. Layton. I don't Layton. want it. It's the best car at any price in the market. I think I'm going crazy. You're the man of the hour, Mr. Layton. The grandest thing to come along since chewing gum. You must be the happiest man in the world. And for a happy man, there's nothing like a little $200,000 yacht. It's the best car in any price. Greatest thing in Europe. I wish I was dead. Well, I have two alternatives. Murder or suicide. <laughs> Death House, Layton speaking. <laughs> oh, hello, Beekman. Tony's been what? Arrested? Oh, what for? What oh, for? Oh, only a speeding map, eh? Oh, where is she? Where is she? Yeah, yeah, I know where that is. Well, I think I'll take a ride out there and see if I can even the score a little. Thanks a million. So long. <laughs> speeding, eh? Well, well. <laughs> Oh, do you no good to talk to me, Mr. Layton? She's in jail and she's going to stay there. But, Your Honor, do you happen to know that Miss Gateson is one of America's richest heiresses? Don't care who she is. She's staying two days in jail and she's getting fined $25. She is the niece of Cyrus Nefri, the railroad king. $50. The more you talk, the worse it'll be for her. Your Honor, her ancestors came over on the Mayflower. A hundred dollars. I'll take this to the Supreme Court. Oh, you will, eh? Hey, Joe, bring in the prisoner. Yes, sir. You big city shysters can't tell me how to run my court. She's going to get 30 days in jail. Who is? You are. Evening, Miss Gateson. Oh, but that's ridiculous. I don't care who you are, who your uncle is, or what shipping line your ancestors founded. You'll get the same treatment as any other criminal. 30 days in jail. So long, Miss Gateson. You aren't going to let him walk out of here, are you, Judge? Why not? He hasn't done anything. Not done anything? Why, Why he's one of the most notorious criminals in the world. Oh, don't be silly. You won't get away with that. Isn't he your lawyer? My lawyer? Certainly not. Look at his face. Do you think I'd have a lawyer with a face like that? Oh, well, now, that's hard to say. I don't pay any attention to her, Judge. He's as crazy as an owl. We used to work at our house, and he left with... With half the silver. We didn't report him because he wanted us to give him a chance to go straight. Now, see here, that's about enough out of you. You see how he talks to me? He's always hated me. He just came here to try and get me in more trouble. Judge, I appeal to your sense of honor and my rights as an American citizen. This if woman is a moron. Down, she's a liar and she's a bundle of... Quiet! Quiet! Snap out of both of you. Look, Judge, I'm Steve Layton. I'm a reporter on the journal. You see? I... First he was my lawyer. Now he's a reporter. I'm telling you, he's a dangerous character. Lock him up. Lock them both up. I'll try and decide what to do with him in the morning. But I haven't done anything. I'll decide that in the morning. Right now, I'm tired and confused. Now, I'm going home, go to bed. we will straighten this out in the morning. Bye. If I had the wings of an angel Over these prison walls I would fly you don't mind if I sing, do you? I certainly do. It isn't in my sentence. 
Isn't this cozy? Having cells right next to each other. Coffin's cozy, too, but who wants to be in one? I got the judge to let me phone a couple of the papers. I said you couldn't bear the thought of our being separated, so you had yourself thrown into jail just to be near me. That was charming of you. Oh, I gave you a break this time. I phoned your paper first. Oh, thanks. You hate me, don't you? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I merely loathe you. It's too bad we had to be enemies. We might have made a lovely couple. Not us. I never do my slumming on Park Avenue. You're contemptible. Well, you're no prize package yourself. All right, you can both go home. Home? Why, Judge, we were just beginning to get settled. Your lawyer's here with a writ of habeas corpus. And I got his paper on the phone. They said they'd take the responsibility for him. Oh. Why did you tell me he was a criminal? Uh, go ahead, answer that one. Well, I'll tell you very honestly, Judge. I just wanted to be near him. Yeah. You see, I'm in love with him, and I thought I might have a chance to convince him of the fact. Suffering, catfish. Here we go again. <laughs> I ought to charge you two for using jail for courting purposes, but I'll let you off this time. Oh, thank you, Judge. Can I give you a lift home, Steve? No, thanks. I have my car. Well, I'll be seeing you. Not if I can help it, sister. And, uh, by the way, I wouldn't go any further with this little marriage gag if I were you. Why not? Because I am marrying someone else in the morning, and you don't want to look any sillier than you're going to look, do you? You're not. No, I'll read about it in the papers. I'm sure they'll have all the details. Everything I do seems to be news now. Goodbye, Miss Gateson, and don't think it's been pleasant. Oh, Steve. Steve, isn't there anything I could do to help make up? Yes, there certainly is. Stay away from me. You've made me the laughing stock of the paper, the town, and the whole country. And having achieved that, you ought to retire into your smug satisfaction. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I never want to see you again. Do I have to make it any clearer? Certainly not. You've made it perfectly clear. Well, that was a great story you got on the Carter trial, Stevens. <laughs> Congratulations. Lay off, will you, Canavan? Oh, now what's happened to your sense of humor? You got trampled on by a pair of French heels. Oh. Office. Oh, hello, Steve. Why, Miss Gateson? Look, I'm getting out of here. The place is getting too ritzy for Say, me. Hey, uh, uh, you got a little statement for the press, Miss Gateson? Oh, I'm afraid not today, Mr. Canavan. I came to get an interview with Mr. Layton. I thought we settled that last night. No, I've been doing a little thinking about this since last night, and it's too important to be shrugged off. Why, why, of course it is. So you go right ahead and interview Mr. Layton. Mr. Layton, let's pretend I represent the journal. Oh, look, will you... First, don't you think Tony Gateson is a human being? Why don't you treat her like one? Well, go ahead, answer the question. Of course, I don't think she is. Steve again. Oh. Look, if you want to lose a few teeth, Canavan, you keep that up, will you? Question number two. When are you going to start behaving like a human being yourself? Well, now, that is a good question. Maybe I'll start being a human being again when Miss Can Miss Gateson goes back to Park Avenue and leaves me alone. Don't you realize she's sorry? Don't you know that she's in love with you? Oh, uh, look, let me give you a question, Miss Gateson. Steve, why don't you admit that you're in love with her? Because I'm... Because she's... She's spoiled. She's... Ill-tempered. She's conniving. Oh, she's... darling. She's... Darling, you do love me. Love you? Didn't you hear what I just said? I said you're a, you're, you're, you're bad-tempered, you're black-hearted, you're an unpleasant little witch. Oh, but you do love me. <laughs> yes, of course I love you. <laughs> and I hate myself for it. All right, why don't you marry her? Yes, why don't you marry me? Well, do you think you could be happy on my salary? Oh, I could be, with you. Uh-oh. Copy boy! Copy boy! Oh, I'm trapped. Oh, darling, this is the way it was always meant to be, from the very beginning. <laughs> I suppose it was. It's going to be a beautiful romance, darling. There never was anything like it before in the whole world. I guess not. It certainly started the hard way. Now I suppose that fool cannibal will really smear us all over the front page. <laughs> what for? You're not copy anymore, either one of you. You're just a couple of kids in love. <laughs> Nothing unusual about you anymore. Hey, do you like the sound of that, honey? Uh, 
I love the sound of it. Well, then, Miss Gateson, you've made a contract. you got a deal. Great, great, wonderful. <laughs> I feel just like Cupid. Well, you're a little old for the part. Is it all right with you if I kiss my bride? Copy, boy! Cameraman! Get that picture! Got it, boss? <laughs> oh, darling. I think we got the double cross. Never mind, Steve. Let's let everybody in on the story. Let it get around. You've changed your mind. It is news, hmm, Mr. Canavan? Yeah, that's right. It certainly is news when two kids fall in love. Great news. Right, Steve? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess it is a bad. The greatest news in the world. Oh, come here, will you, Tony? Let's do a retake on that last scene, just in case the guy didn't get his picture. Come on, come on. Darling, huh? that little breath of trouble this way. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Scientific tests prove that Colgate Tooth Powder in seven cases out of ten instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. Money can't buy a dentifrice that will clean your teeth better than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember the name Colgate Tooth Powder with the accent on powder. In tonight's play, Dane Clark and Faye Emerson, who co-starred as Steve and Tony, appeared through the courtesy of Warner Brothers. Will Gear and Jack Hartley played the judge and the editor. Dane Clark will soon be seen in Pride of the Marines, and Faye Emerson is currently to be seen in Hotel Berlin. Love is News, a 20th Century Fox production, was adapted especially for this program by Gene Holloway. The music was composed and conducted by Charles Paul. And the entire production was directed by Mark Sloan. Next week, your Colgate Tooth Powder Theater of Romance will bring you The Informer, the moving drama of a man bewildered by poverty and made ambitious by love during the days of the black and tan trouble in Ireland. Join us next Tuesday, won't you? Hello, everybody, hello. Hello is the shampoo that glorifies your hair, so hello, everybody, hello. Yes, use Halo shampoo if you want naturally bright and beautiful hair. For Halo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling film. The first time you use Halo, see how your hair sparkles and gleams with natural brilliance. How the deep natural color looks brighter, glossier. Even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather. Halo quickly carries away loose dandruff and dirt. Needs no lemon or vinegar rinse. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Get Halo shampoo at any cosmetic counter. So hello, everybody, hello. Hello, shampoo, hello. Until next Tuesday night, when Colgate Tooth Powder's Theater of Romance brings you the informer, this is your host saying good night and wishing you love, happiness, and romance. When Germany surrendered unconditionally, the national spirit went up, but used fat collections are going down. So I want to remind the ladies that our war against Japan calls for colossal quantities of fat. Yes, calls for every drop you can save from your cooking. It's needed for scores of vital war supplies, medicines, and soaps for military and home use. So, save as you never saved before. Your butcher will give you two red points plus four cents for every pound you turn in. If you live in a rural community or your regular meat dealer does not accept used fat, Call your home demonstration agent immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.